Hi, I'm Greg Dell with Dell Disability Lawyers here with attorney Cesar Gavidia. And Cesar, we're doing this series where we're talking about prudentials, reasons for denying long-term disability claims. And in this particular video, I want to talk about how does prudential use video surveillance and social media surveillance and also why to deny long-term disability claims. Sure. I mean, it's a very effective tool they keep in the tool shed, this video surveillance or video um, or surveillance in general of a client because um, you know, surveillance doesn't just mean video. It means surveilling or watching um, that, that claimant through various sources. It could be social media, it could be, you know, any, any active watching, overseeing of what that person's activities are on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so certainly two of the most common are video surveillance, uh, which is typically conducted by, you know, a private investigative team. Uh, PIs that this is what they do day in and day out. They in, you know follow people or hired to follow people and watch what their activities are. And then of course you know what you have through f Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and your various you know sources of social media. And you know that in and of itself, it's like self-incriminating evidence in many cases because it's the person themselves posting pictures, statements different things in terms of even sometimes showing this is my location day to day, you know, so. So people always call us and they basically want to know what, le what expectation of privacy should I have with this video surveillance? When should I assume that Prudential has someone watching me? Well, um, it, you, could, you could safely assume um, at any point where they've, uh, they've told you or you suspect that they're conducting some sort of review of your claim or medical review of your claim or where they've asked to have you undergo some sort of examination or, or interview with them. Um, so the reason that is, is because if they can conduct some level of surveillance of you, watching you for three or four days um, and videotaping your activities, where you come and go, you go to the grocery store, your activities outside of your home, um, then they can ask you certain questions either through that um, uh, interview with them or through the examination where they're gonna potentially draw out inconsistent statements. But should people really have this fear, like are the phones tapped? Are they looking at them in the house? Where do they have any level? What's the safe zone where they can say, okay, I'm not being Well, they surveyed. can't, they're not, um, they don't seek out federal wiretapping um, warrants. Right. <laughs> okay? okay, so they can't conduct uh, you know, phone tapping, that's, that's a federal crime. They would, that company would go down. So mm -hmm. some suspicion or, um, or fear that they're conducting, you know, phone tapping, that's, that's not realistic. They don't conduct that type of, of surveillance like the federal government can do. And when they do that, they have to seek out federal right. search so, warrants so for them. So there's no phone tapping. Right. But what about, and if they're in their house, they should feel like they're not being surveyed. But as soon as they leave the house, is it fair game for Prudential to follow them anywhere? They have to consider that any place that someone in the general public has a vantage point um, or line of sight, that that investigative team can videotape them. So that means if you, you know, um, have all your blinds up in your home and they happen to park out in front of your home and they have a, a camera or, you know, they're watching you from their car, they could see directly into your home and see what the activity levels are, but usually they park a couple blocks away. They watch you come in and out. They watch you, you know, your car back out and drive away and they follow you to wherever you're going and they watch you get out. They may watch you go into the grocery store. They might watch you, you know, pushing the cart around. They get out, they may, you know, follow you from a few paces behind so that you don't suspect anything. Right. But that's typically the type of surveillance that they do. It's, it's not, it would be ineffective if you knew they were there watching you because then you could ta they, they think you could tailor your activities to you know, appear like you're disabled or, or whatever, or exaggerate or, or whatever, because you know someone's watching you. I, I always encourage people to call us if they have any questions whatsoever, or concerns with their claim um, about surveillance. And, and the one tip I wanna give people is, is don't worry about the surveillance, live your life, but always assume that the company's watching you at any given time. But where it becomes a problem is, is that if you go and tell your doctors something that's inconsistent with an activity that you're really doing in the real life that could be videotaped, then you're going to have a problem. But as long as you're always honest on your Prudential claim forms, honest with your doctors, um, honest with Prudential when they ask you, 
you're not going to have an issue. We can deal with that. Right. It's never going to be a problem. And remember, sometimes this video surveillance can play to your favor right. because it shows you not leaving your house for the three or four days that they're surveilling you. That, that basically is very, could be very consistent with what your limitations are, that you, uh, you know, stay home most of the time and that you, you know, have limited activity, le activity levels and don't venture out. Right. So. so that's a great point that you should assume, you shouldn't assume that video surveillance is necessarily a bad thing. It could help your claim, but it also is a tool that you need to be aware of that Prudential uses very often to try to deny claims. So if you're a Prudential claimant, no matter where you live in the country, feel free to reach out to Caesar, myself, any of our long-term disability attorneys. We'd love to discuss your claim with you and we look forward to helping you in the future. Hi, I'm Gregory Dell, the managing attorney of Dell Disability Lawyers, and I hope you find the video you just watched helpful. We put these videos out all of the time, and we'd love if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. Beyond our videos on our YouTube channel, we also have lots of information available on our website at diattorney.com, and we encourage you to come to our website. The goal is, is that we want you to be educated about the disability insurance process, and when you get to our website, you'll see that we have information all about your specific disability insurance company, your occupation, and your medical condition. And we've designed our website such that you can easily search our website to find things that you may specifically be looking for. Now at our website we have thousands and thousands of pages of information, hundreds of videos that you can search, plus we're building a section of reviews of all the disability insurance companies and we have the Ask Our Lawyer section where you can go ahead and ask us any questions that you may have. Now we realize that you may not need us right now, but you may need us in the future to help you with your disability claim, and we think one of the best ways to keep in touch is by clicking the button below and subscribing to our channel. And most importantly, again, no matter where you live in the country, we're always available. Just go ahead and give us a call. We're happy to discuss your claim and let you know immediately if we can help you.